So in this video, we're going to make the Y-axis motor housing, which is that unit there. It comes in two halves, which I have uh, actually printed separately, and then I've just gone down it with a soldering gun just to melt the two halves together, get a good solid fixing, and then also the Y-axis support piece has been slotted in, and that's also used the soldering gun along there and along the bottom just to melt that in, just to add that added strength of a complete unit uh, and to aid printing. So in this video, we're going to require two bearings. We're going to require two of the pulley wheels. We're also going to require the drive wheel, the drive belt, and two of the bearing housings, along with the rod, and also along with the actual Y-axis motor housing. I'm going to do some of this uh, video from around that side just to aid and assist. Now one of the problems is in order to keep the aesthetics nice we've got to undo one of these supports in order to get that drive rod into position. It can be either side. I tend to use to take off the one on the right hand rear pulling that X axis all the way forward and that helps them to just generate a little bit of play. So I'm going to undo that and then we're going to start the assembly of, uh, of, of the whole Y-axis motor drive. So I need to undo, I'm going to undo this one here which is on the right hand side if you're looking from the front. Okay, so that now gives me some room to be able to actually pull that to one side just enough for me to get the actual unit into place. If you don't want to go through all the aggravation of undoing it, I mean, I'm doing it from an aesthetics perspective, you could just drill a, uh, about a nine millimeter hole there in line and, and just position the rod through and just assemble all the unit pieces on. Uh, I prefer to keep everything intact. I, I want to keep these faces nice and clean uh, and not have a, a bung or a hole at the side of the machine. So we need to, at the Y-axis rod, put the pulley wheel on with the teeth facing inwards. Need to undo that drug screw slightly, get that into position. Followed by the bearing housing with the round cylinder part facing towards the teeth. Followed by the drive gear pulley with the a grub screw end pointing towards the motor. Then obviously the motor housing pointing towards that. Followed by the other bearing facing the teeth for the pulley wheel. So that essentially is how the unit should look assembled. Then we need to drag, grab the drive belt and make sure that we hook the drive belt over ready so it's in position for the motor. Okay, so now we're going to assemble this onto the machine. So what we do is just thread that through, push that into that cavity there, pull that out and that is it now into position. Obviously we can just push all these in and do all the tightening up and the positioning and everything. It was just all about getting the actual motor housing and all them components into position. Next what we're going to do is we will measure the position of this and start to get this screwed into place so it is held into position. Before we actually put that back onto there, we're going to refasten the support piece back on to its fixings on the leg on the top. Now we're going to fit the actual Y-axis motor housing to the back of the print table. We're going to need to use the six screws and then also we're going to attach the actual bearing housings to the support using the M3 hex head bolts. I'm going to flip this over, so hopefully we can have another viewpoint of how we're going to do this. Okay, so 
that's where the actual motor housing is going to be mounted. But before we do that, we need to know exactly what position it is because we want to make sure that the Z rod drive comes up and is nice and level with the motor. There's a quite easy measurement that we've done for that. So what we're going to do, we need to use a bit of tape on it. It's looking at it from the rear and obviously that being the right hand side. I'm going to do 21 millimeters from that face, which is the right hand side. And from the left hand side, I do 25.8 or 258 millimeters. I use my set square to draw me a straight line on those marks. So now I've got those two marks, I need to position that so it looks central to the two marks that I've drawn. And then once that's done, using the drill, I'm going to use the 1.5mm drill here. Make sure I force that up and drill my holes. Once I've done that, I can clean off the floor. Back in position. In. That's that now nicely in position and from the measurements that we've drawn we should be nice and central with the rod coming through and guiding up. So the rod will come up and will go into that hole there which should now be central. Now we need to fasten the bearing housings so we push those in and then using our M3 screw heads we position and tighten those up And then just repeat that to the other side. 